Hey there, what's up? Santi here. Today, I want to talk about better ways to avoid distractions so that you can do more of the meaningful work that you've been meaning to do, as well as learning the type of things that you've been meaning to learn. So first, let me give you an example. Let's just assume we live in a hypothetical world where there's like some sort of brick looking thing that we just can't stop staring at and we feel the need to scroll or something like that, right? Well, we live in that world and that is called a phone. I introduce you to phone. This is phone and it's very addictive. <laughs> well, yeah, that was a stupid joke, but you get the idea, right? Like the idea is that we are addicted to our phones, we're addicted to our computers. And there's so many things about it that makes it really hard to let go of. Because think about it for a second. Like if you wanted to stop, really stop your phone addiction, you would get rid of it, right? You would throw it at the window. The window's that way, but it's closed. Um, <laughs> you would throw it at the window and you wouldn't use it anymore. And if you think about it, there's no better way than getting rid of the source of the distraction because you physically can't do it anymore. Hold the thought because we'll get back to that. Now, let's go to the usual approach, which is like, yeah, I need to get better. I need to stop scrolling so much on my phone. I need to stop using social media so much. I need to stop binging YouTube for hours and hours. That is what we all say. And we just lie to ourselves the whole day through. And we just never follow through on this because the internet, the entertainment industry and all of this stuff that distracts us are made by a lot of very smart people that really know how to hold our attention. And so it's really us as individuals versus like the machine that is social media, the machine that is the entertainment industry. So we need something better than willpower. And don't worry, I do have an app that I want to show you. It's called Freedom. And we'll get to it in a second. But at first, I really think it's important to understand why this matters. There's this book by Kelly McGulligal called The Willpower Instinct. And in it, there's a really interesting way to think about willpower. So willpower, self-control, discipline, all these things are like a muscle, right? And that implies two main things. One is that you can train it to get stronger, right? You can improve your willpower and your self-control. But interestingly enough, this also means that your willpower, your discipline, your self-control also fatigues like a muscle. If you use a muscle too much, if you spend your whole day doing dumbbell curls and you can't stop, like <laughs> your, your muscles gotta be so exhausted that by the time you need to cook and just like lift a frying pan, you're not gonna be able to do it because you're fatigued. So it's the same thing with self-control. So we need to know where to allocate our self-control. So if you just decide like, yeah, I'll, sorry, <laughs> I almost dropped you. Uh, so, so if we decided, okay, I'm going to stop using my phone so much and you might be able to have the willpower to do that, right? But again, like it's like doing a bicep curl all day. You're just saying like, no, I'm going to avoid the distractions of the phone, avoid the distractions of social media. And then by the time you want to do some meaningful work, some meaningful learning, you're exhausted because you've exhausted and you fatigue your discipline muscle, right? So this is why discipline shouldn't be the main tool that you're using to avoid distractions, but rather your environment, shaping the place where you work, shaping the place where you live. Because coming back to the example that if you throw your phone at the window, you don't have it anymore. That is changing your environment so that you physically can't use your phone anymore. And that is the ultimate solution. But of course, we live in a world where we do need our phones. And I haven't met a single person that doesn't use the excuse like, oh yeah, well, but I use my phone for work, which I say as well, you know? So I don't think we can easily, at least most of us, can just easily get rid of our phones and not use it again. But what we can do is shape a bit of the digital environment that we have so that we have scheduled moments where we can't use most of the distracting features in our phones. And I'm still trying to find the best tool for my particular needs, but the one that I'm using right now and that I'm enjoying is called Freedom. The first thing is that in the website, you'll be able to see that it's available for Windows, Windows, Android, iOS, Mac. So it's very cross-platform, which I appreciate because that way it doesn't matter which type of device you have, you're going to be able to use it. So Freedom, the way it works is once you get your account, you go to the dashboard and in there you can actually select the different devices that you want to start blocking and as well as apps or websites that you want to block. If you want to block particular apps, you do need to do that from the system tray. You just right click and you select the ones that you want to block. But then if you go to the website, you have a couple more options, which is particularly different sessions. You can schedule sessions or you can start them now or you can even start them later. You set the time that you want to be distraction free. And during that period of time is literally like if you threw all the distractions at the window, you are incapable to reach the distractions and now you can focus on your work. And then you're not relying on discipline as much, but rather on the environment that you shaped where you physically cannot get distracted. So obviously it's going to take a bit of trial and error until you find finally customize things the way you want them to. And something I really like about particularly the desktop setup is that you can do this. 
you can go to the icon tray that you get after you download the app on Windows in my case. And then when you right click on that, you're gonna be able to see a couple of really cool options. So one that I really enjoy is enable website exceptions, right? And I'm gonna talk more about why this is useful, but you can just like go to manage the exceptions. And then from there, you can just add particular websites that you believe are related to your work. You just add it there and there you go. This way you can pretty much block the whole of the internet, but leave a couple of exceptions that perhaps are related to your work so that you still have the tools you need to be able to do the work that you're trying to do. Because at first I really wanted to block the whole of the internet, but then I started doing some work and I realized like, oh no, I do need this app to do this thing or I do need this website for some of the research. So yeah, that's why I think it's really useful to block the whole of the internet, every website, apart from a couple of few very useful exceptions. Now on your phone is pretty much the same. And again, that's something I really like about freedom that you can use it across your devices. And you can actually even have certain setups, certain systems that you can activate in both devices at the same time. So again, experiment with that is really cool. So for instance, something that I have set up on my phone is this recurring block that I have from Monday to Friday that my phone gets blocked at 11 p.m. Pretty much everything in my phone gets blocked. And then from there, I literally can't go online. So I might as well read, which is a better habit to do. And then I end up going to bed earlier. So I started doing that and it's working pretty well. On the phone in particular, I do recommend you go to the settings and you turn on log mode. I think this is a much better approach to it because this literally doesn't let you do workarounds such as log out of your account or actually modify the apps that you're allowed to use during a blocking session. So definitely turn this on. I, I think the only use for not having this on is when you're just starting to use the app and starting to get used to how it works and making sure you're not blocking anything important to the things you need for work and stuff like that. So that's the only reason I would recommend like not locking. But apart from that, always have it in log mode. That way it's way more reliable and I think it's going to be way more beneficial for you. So I've heard about apps like Freedom for a while, but I haven't started using them until recently. Like for instance, right now I'm learning languages. I have a video on that in my other channel in case you want to check it out. It's in the description. Uh, but in order to learn languages, I feel like I, I do need to allocate some time to not get distracted. And that's why I decided, okay, I need to finally start using this app. And it's been really good for me. So I've been really enjoying it. One of the few cons that I actually find in Freedom is that I wish it was a bit more strict because particularly on the computer, there's ways to just like work around it. Sometimes it's useful if you made a mistake and you block a tool that you need for work. It's a bit annoying because it'd be incredible if it was literally impossible for you to get distracted, right? And for that in the future, I might start using other apps, but for now, I'm really happy with this. If you use other apps like this, please let me know. I'm happy to experiment and try other ones. Also, in case you've been wondering, no, this video is not sponsored by Freedom. I decided to do this by myself. However, last minute, I did manage to access the affiliate program, which means that if you use my link, I do get a small commission, which pretty much helps me keep making videos like this. So it's a small thing. If you do end up using the app, I truly appreciate it, but honestly, no pressure. I really hope you find this video video useful and the app if you do go for it and I wish you the best of luck with your journey towards getting less distracted and more focused on the things you're learning and the work you're doing. So with that said, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.